So some new uh, features came out on ChatGPT, so I thought I would look at them with you and also maybe keep uh, giving you some feedback and, and how to use ChatGPT, so I'm becoming a very frequent user. So uh, these are the few ones. Prompt example is great for me. GPT-4 by default is a very good option. Suggested replies, multiple file upload, staying locked in, and keyboard shortcuts. So let me walk you through one by one. So this is my chat GPT account. Of course, I'm logged in right now. This is the login window. So let me log out and show you. Previously, what was happening was that every two weeks or so, or every time you go to a new design device, it will ask you to log in again. And it was a you know technically difficult process. You have to add uh, you know, your email on first step, then your password second one, and then you're finally logged in. And it was a little annoying every time you were ready to just start and, and it will require you to log in. Now, this screen is new. There are a couple of changes that they mentioned has happened. Previously, whenever you log in, the default, uh, the algorithm was GPT 3.5. GPT 3.5 is slower, uh, is faster, but less trained, less, uh, you know, less training of, of this model. Uh, has happened and is of course gives more superficial answer, but it's faster. It was free and it was unlimited. It was also available in free account while GPT-4 was only available in paired account. So every time I log in, I will switch to GPT-4. Initially, they said you can you you'll have a ca cap. They have been gradually increasing the cap. Right now, the cap is 50 messages every three hours. But the amount of work I do with GPT-4, it's rare for me to hit the cap. Sometimes I do hit the cap because the cap used to be 25 messages every three hours, but now it's up to 50. But Still, despite the cap limitation, I was often switching over to GPT-4 whenever I logged in. What has it done now is that by default, it uh, defaults to GPT-4 if you have a paid account. Uh, otherwise, it will be GPT-3.5. So you know, it saves me one click. Uh, the other thing that is new is that these prompts here. Uh, it is giving you some some prompts so that there are some pre-written uh, contextual prompts for you make up a story, plan a trip, brainstorm content ideas, come up with the concepts. I've not used them. I have used a different service called APIRM, which has a screen like this that was added on using Google Chrome, but there was some formatting issues and I don't use Chrome very often. I think bringing that idea built in prompts, I think in future what ChatGPT can do is let you share your prompts. So if I have a very custom prompt, I can tag it, create it and just share it with which ChatGPT user and just create like a prompt library and then make the prompt library searchable. Imagine I want to search a prompt uh, for posting LinkedIn post, right? So I, I have a very custom prompt where five people have it and you can upvote it or downvote it or ChatGPT just select like the best prompt uh, that it has found that works the best or is used very often and then just start sharing it uh, with others. Uh, I'm not sure who's generating these prompts right now, but let's try one of these. So let's start with brainstorm content ideas. I clicked on it, it says brainstorm five episode ideas for my new podcast on urban design. Now, of course, I don't wanna do anything with urban design, right? So it probably is not a very useful prompt for me to use. So that's one of the weakness of the prompt library right now that they have built that it's, it, it is not customizable. What if they allow it, you to customize these prompts that shows up on your new screen uh, as, a, as a way to, to, uh, to ask the question. So let's go back, let's start a new chart and I don't want to use a prompt. Another feature they said was that you can now uh, get suggestions on how to continue the conversation. So let's say I want to start LinkedIn post. So give me five ideas to create a new LinkedIn post to use um, post uh, on topic of what's new in chat GPT to share with my audience with focus on AI and healthcare, okay? So, you know, let's see what it gives me. It's gonna brainstorm for me, and it's giving me some uh, ideas for posts, unlocking potentially in the future, GPT-4 future medical research and clinical support, chat GPT in digital health, intersection of AI and patient care, uh, reimagining healthcare. So I'm gonna let it go through the five prompts, so because I'm trying to see the new feature, it says that a way to continue the conversation, right? So let's see if it gives me something to continue the conversation. I don't see it. Uh, I thought it said there will be a new feature where it will allow you or give you some suggestion or hints on how to continue the conversation, but I am not seeing that. So I'm not seeing the suggested replies on how to continue the conversation. Maybe it is true for certain situation and not other situation. So I will uh, keep playing around and see if I find it. Prompt examples, not very useful for me because they are not customizable prompt. GPT-4 by default saves me a click. 
not having to log in saves me a click and I, these keyboard shortcuts will be useful. I use the shortcuts very often. Now, multiple five upload is very specific for what is the code interpreter. So what is code interpreter? Okay, let's start a new chat. And when you are GPT-4, if you hover on it, you, you see three options. There's a default that we often use. Then there is code interpreter. In code interpreter, I did a LinkedIn post uh, and newsletter post on what is code interpreter and what powers it bring. It basically is initially designed code interpreter to be able to write the code, but a side advantage or side effect is that it gives you a plus sign to start uploading files to then have discussion with the files. So right now it is mostly focused on data. So you can upload an Excel or PDF or a CSV file with a lot of data, and then you can query the data. So let's say you export all your contacts and you can share the contacts and say, okay, uh, tell me which city I have the most contacts. So tell me uh, what is the most common profession or how many neurologists do I know? And it can then query your contact file that you uploaded as CSV or Excel sheet, or any data that you uploaded and, and so on and so forth. You can extract data from websites and then query here to create patterns. But now one uh, up, uh, new update is that you can upload multiple files. So let me collect it. And it's saying me gives option, let me upload these four files. So this was not doable before. You can only select one at a, one at a time. So I'm gonna upload these four test files. It's some questions that I'm generating for medical cues. All four have been added here. Let me send it them. So I've uploaded several text files. How can I assist you with these files? Okay, these files have some medical questions. Uh, tell me uh, how many questions relate to related to atrial fibrillation. Let's see if we can do that. So it's working. It's going through those files, analyzing them. You can actually see what code is working, happening when it is analyzing through that file. If you're a pro programmer, this may be useful for you. And after releasing it, there are 28 instances where agile fibrillation is mentioned. So, so you, you know, these are small files, so this may be not very useful, but if it's a really large file, like 300 pages, or if there's a lot of files and you need to go through and analyze them, I, I think this will be very useful. So here's my summary of the updates. I hope you found it useful.